Thanks, guys, for kicking it over. Joining us is Dan, the game director, and Rich, the brand director on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And thanks for being here, Mika. Uh, thank you for being here. Of course. <laughs> and I think this is probably one of the most anticipated Xbox titles coming out this year. So we're excited to get right into it and talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the big questions I have is how has Lara changed again since the last Tomb Raider game? Um, she changed a lot uh, based on what she experienced at the end of Rise, because I don't want to spoil anything, but something <laughs> happening at the end of Rise, mm -hmm. our father gets killed by Trinity, and she's taking a year where she's going to be tracking them, also training, also being, you know, changing in terms of physically and also uh, emotionally and psychologically. Uh, she's much more driven, uh, she's much more mature, experienced, so she knows what she wants, and she knows what's the only thing she's you know, not quite sure exactly is what Trinity wants, and she's following that. And she also have her companion Jonah following her and also changing physically and also emotionally. I think so. that the thing that I love best is that we're showing the most capable, most calculating version of Lara Croft ever. And so she's at the height of her skills and she knows this, but it also means that we have to dial everything else up. So if you look at the combat, if you look at the exploration, you look at the traversal, if you look at the narrative, just the inner conflict, and of course the tombs, everything has been ratcheted up because the world has to give Lara more of a challenge. Right, so you say that this is like fully skilled Lara, so we're not starting from a blank slate. She has the skills from the p previous game and now she's just building even more. Can you talk about some of the skill progression that we might see? Uh, the skill progression is, is, right now we exploded it. It's way different than Rise in terms of how we approach this. Because um, she's uh, way more, even by, by default, uh, she's way more powerful. She's much more faster. She's more, much more uh, precise. There's a couple of things like that. She can disappear in the jungle. She understands more of the world and becoming one with it. Uh, in terms of the skill progression, uh, she, you can also, as a player, want to choose what type of very experienced Lara you want. Could be more about the exploration. Could be more about the combat, the stealth. Could be more, much more about the uh, everything that is about uh, uh, building uh, or, or way to move into the world. So it's very, it's very uh, pushing that to the next, uh, to the next level. But what if I'm not like the best at stealth? Can I still run in <laughs> akimbo guns? Just take <laughs> out? Absolutely. So we, we like, we love to give players options. So you can still go in in what we call the assault style of gameplay, and Lara's more proficient that way, and you have more options. But for the players that want to go more stealth, you can play that way as well. And one of the things that I really like is we allow a lot more flexibility going between the two. So in previous games, once you were in stealth, and then as we call it, the bubble popped, and you were now in assault, like they knew where you were, <laughs> you couldn't ever go back to stealth. But we've right. changed the game, overhauled the AI, so enemies will eventually stop looking for Lara. You can disappear up into the canopy, mm. you can you know, evade them, and then re-engage on stealth. We look at it as Lara's becoming one with the jungle. And so she is striking and then disappearing like the jaguar. So she can use stealth to whittle down their numbers, or she can go in guns blazing, but then disappear and they say, where is she, where is she? So it's really about showing Lara, realizing that she is outgunned and outnumbered by Trinity, using the jungle against them, and she is the one that is taking control of the combat and, and dealing out the, the damage, dealing out the fear on her terms. That was a really awesome shot. I'm just watching this gameplay. I'm so excited to uh, finally get my hands on this. Um, so we're seeing Lara has her trusty bow again. We're seeing, um, are, is she going to have her trusty ice pick I see with her? Can you tell us a little bit more about the mechanics of the game, fighting, combat? Yes, what we, we seeing? Yes, we, we push a lot. We, okay, Lara, she's very smart. Whatever, right. what she does is very smart. So she, when she goes into an environment, whatever it is for combat or anything else, she can be analyzing it and using it at her own advantage. So the things that here for the trusty bow, whatever it's a weapon, or now we have like this machete type of, of weapon, uh, she uses it very efficiently. So the thing, the thing for us that is very important when we're looking at all the arsenal that she has, it's all about you know looking at the world as a puzzle and, and using so a lot more options this time around. So you're getting to whatever it's assault like we're talking about or the actual stealth. It's looking at the world and knowing like okay now I could basically use that or do that. So this is way uh, more important that the type of arrows also you're gonna use. You can instill fear with them. <laughs> so you can scare them or you can really create fear. There's a jaguar, jaguar javelin which is a special kind of arrow that she can craft on the fly 
and it makes people seeing the thinking that the jungle itself, the the animals or everything is attacking them. So they're turning around and say what, and they and they attacking their enemies. So everything from the stealth to assault, we're trying to make sure that you have a lot of options and freedom to do whatever you want to do. Awesome, and I heard you mention puzzles, and puzzles are obviously a huge part of every Tomb Raider campaign. Um, can you tell us maybe what the balance between puzzles and combat will be? I know that you said this is just a larger game in general, right. so are we looking forward to like some real nail-biting, like mind-boggling puzzles? We are, and I think that we look at the world itself as a character, and the world is protecting its secrets. And Lara is one of the few people that can go into these hidden pockets of the world and, and survive. And so we put Lara in a jungle. It's one of the deadliest places in the world. Everything is trying to kill you. So in addition to the puzzle playing out into the traversal, you know, we have new skills like Lara having a rappel, being able to wall run, so you have to figure out how am I going to get to new areas. We put them into the combat, as Dan was saying, so that you're, you're approaching it like, OK, what skills do I need to use? Lara's learning from what happens to her, for example, there's a scene where she's faced off with a jaguar, and another jaguar is using that distraction to sneak up behind her, and Lara learns, okay, using distraction. And then after that, mm -hmm. you're able to use a distraction arrow to make an enemy turn around quickly and fire and shoot his friends. So Lara learns from the world in a puzzle like that. And then, of course, the best way that we represent it is with tombs. Mm -hmm. And they are more than ever, they're bigger than ever, they're more deadly than ever, <laughs> because again, this is, this is the Maya apocalypse. Lara is racing against Trinity to try and save humanity. I mean, Trinity wants to remake the world in their image, and Lara, especially since she partially caused this it. by <laughs> taking an artifact, you know, a little bit rashly, mm -hmm. she feels the responsibility to, to make things right again. So going into these tombs, a place that celebrated death, a place where everything inside, the traps, the puzzles, are all meant to kill you, this is where we really put those brain teasers mm -hmm. to, to great effect. And, and I think one of the things that's really exciting about this, something our fans have been asking for, we've changed the difficulty now. So you can set on four different options oh. how you want the difficulty. Yes. So it's not just that you change the difficulty and everything scales back. You can change the traversal, the navigation, yes. the what? combat, and the, and the puzzle, puzzle difficulty, difficulty. Ind independently. Yes. So for example, when you are in a puzzle situation, if you're on easy, Laura's gonna talk to herself, give herself plenty of hints. If you're on normal, she may make some passing references. On hard, she won't talk to herself at all. Where and was this? This is My new. My whole life. This is completely <laughs> new. This. And here, you'll love this. You'll love this even more on the traversal. <laughs> it's something our fans have been asking for. On the navigation, uh -huh. if you want to figure out where you can go in the environment, again, it's reinforcing that puzzle part, you know we have sort of the white ledge markings to show where you could climb up or do a right. double jump. In easy, they are there. In, in normal, they're actually a little bit more blended into the background. And in hard, they're gone. So the, really the idea is that from the community's wow. requests, we've yeah. overhauled the difficulty. So you could have difficult combat, easy navigation, and medium puzzles if you want. Or if you just wanted to be literally Lara Croft, you could just turn everything to hard. Absolutely. You and changed and everything screwed. to what we call ultimate survivor and mode. We, no, it's a it's, uh, it's, yeah, deadly obsession. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, and it's crazy because it's bringing what you know on rise we call the ultimate. Survivor. And we push it to the next level. See, so it's even because the game in general is harder, yeah. right? Because we want to showcase how you know how the, the Lara is much more, uh, uh, much more uh, competent in what she does. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we, you have this deadly obsession. We call it deadly obsession because you have to be obsessed yeah. to put it that, <laughs> that level. Yeah, it means that you can only save uh, the, the game only saves at campfires. Yes. No health regen. Enemies oh. are much harder. They have body armor. They have, they There's they no have UI. more weapons. You have less weapons. It costs you. Uh, it actually costs you resources to make a campfire so yep. you can save the game. Ooh. It's, it's hard I can't it's hard wait to play that for 10 minutes and then realize <laughs> I'm not good enough and turn that back off. That sounds extremely hard. Oh my goodness. I mean, I just, as I was talking to you earlier, as a long, long time Tomb Raider fan, I think my first Halloween costume when I was a little girl was like Lara Croft. That is awesome. So like, <laughs> awesome. this is the franchise for me. I'm just so happy to see Lara, even getting closer to her OG costume a little bit, it seems like yes. it's changed yep. it a little bit yep. more. And it's with that, it's with our modern survival action take on it, right? right. We always want to view things through that modern lens. So we're going to give you a little bit closer to the teal tank top. We're going to give you a little <laughs> bit closer to the le leather gloves. Mm -hmm. But we're doing it through our lens because this is still Lara Croft. She's still on her way to becoming that sort of legend that everybody knows. But right. this is absolutely 
the, her at the height of her powers. This is what I like to call pre-locking Jeeves in a freezer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but still the amazing badass that we've come to know and love. And Absolutely. as you were saying, getting back, look at her muscles, my God. Yes. That she's was a got, conscious effort yes. as well. Oh, exactly. she's so buff. Because when yeah. you're looking at the traversal, again, remember, she's been through a lot. Right. And when you're looking at the traversal, now she has not just the wall running, not just the rappelling, she will climb Ceilings. upside down on sound. ceilings at points. Exactly. Is she life goals or wife goals? I do not know. Maybe <laughs> definitely both. She's so phenomenal. I'm just, Thank I'm you. so excited to get back into the world of Laura. Like being in this mindset and playing this character, one that we've known for so many years, it's just, it feels like going home. And to know that so much passion and love is being put into it, listening to the community to make it even a harder game, mm -hmm. to add more, Underwater. just challenges, more tombs, more yep. puzzles, it's like, this is everything a, a gamer could want. Well, thank you. I really <laughs> appreciate you. that. And, and we look at it as it, it's a little bit of uh, something for everyone because mm -hmm. if you have been there from the beginning and you've seen the origin story, this is absolutely coming to fruition. This is right. how does Lara finally resolve this? How does she? The, and the shadow speaks to that, like the mm -hmm. word shadow with the eclipse, with stepping out of your father's shadow, mm. with the shadow side of herself, of the, the fact that a tomb raider, being a tomb raider, casts a long shadow. Like all of these things are in the world. But at the same point, if you haven't played the game before, this is the point to jump on because <laughs> yes. this is where we just ratchet everything up to 11. These are the world stakes of it's the Maya apocalypse and Lara is racing that ticking clock to stop it. So we think that fans will absolutely see this as a culmination. People who haven't <laughs> played it will see it as, okay, this is the defining moment. This is when Lara becomes the Tomb Raider. So this is the wrap up to the story that we've This is the wrap up of the origin of story. Of the origin yes. story. I love it. I'm so excited. I'm so stoked. So are it's we. It's going to be great. What, when can we expect to get our hands on this one? So Shadow of the Tomb Raider launches on Xbox, PlayStation 4, and uh, PC on September 14th. Like, awesome. This September? This September. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> we said at the beginning, we said we are not going to make you wait long before you get hands on. So it, it actually, we <laughs> announced, uh, we formally announced it on uh, March 14th and uh, six months from start to finish. That's so, so exciting. We're not making people wait. We know people want to play immediately. You we are can't wait to share so it with right the world. about that. You are so <laughs> right about that. Oh my goodness. I'm I know I keep saying it, but like this is such an exciting moment. Like Tomb Raider is such an amazing franchise Thank and I can you. see the way that you guys talk about it. You've put your heart and souls into it and have really brought so much love to Tomb Raider. So, thank, thank you guys you. so thank much for joining much. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a great E3. Yeah. You too. And you we too. will uh, send it back to the not so far away studio over there.